Hey, thanks for coming back to InfoGamer. Hey, today every game needs a background and Doodle Jump's no exception, especially the version we're going to make. And so we're going to first create it in Photoshop, and then we're going to put it in Unity. But Unity will be the next video. So let's get this started. Yeah. And this background will be really simple. It'll just look like a piece of paper, really. You might even be able to take a picture of some lined paper and then upload it to your computer and use that. Yeah! 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 We are now here at my workstation where we will start creating the background for our Doodle Jump game. You can see here that we have Photoshop open. I just want to express the importance of a background in a game. Backgrounds are key because they, especially in 2D games, because they help set the theme and the mood for our game. Lima Skies did a great job with their background. They made it look like a piece of paper. And this gives the feel that the doodles and the, char the characters come to life off of paper, like they're simple drawings that a little kid did and then they're starting to come alive and they're jumping around. Um, I feel that this is very cool and we want to replicate this theme as close as possible. Lima Skies did grid or graphing paper and we want to just do simple lined paper. So we'll start by going to file up at the top and say new. This is where we get to specify the dimensions of our file and we want just US paper size. If you don't have it selected as your default, you can click on this drop down menu and select US paper size. This is a good layout because it's a portrait view of our paper, which means that the vertical direction is taller than the horizontal direction is wide. And this is what we want because when players are playing our game on our phone, they'll be holding their phone in a portrait view or a portrait position, I could say. And so we'll start now by changing the main color of our background. And we want it to be not this white color because it's really bright. We want it to be more of an off-white. So we'll go to our color and we'll select a yellow. And we want this yellow to be close to the white and a little bit on the gray side, but still mainly on the warm and we can make it a little more orange than green. Right about there. So now that we have our color selected, we'll get our paint bucket tool by clicking G or over here on our tool panel, and then just click anywhere in your picture and it'll change the main color to this. And now we want to create a new layer and this will be for the lines. Um, we'll start by creating what's called the left margin. And when I was looking at some paper in my drawer, I saw that most left margins are a red color. So we'll go to our color, and we'll select a red, and we want it to be right about there. Now, to get a really sharp and distinct line, a very fine line, we want to use our marquee tool, and we'll create a little box. We'll start at the top, and click and drag down to the bottom, and then make it a little thin line right about there. Now we'll select our brush tool, which is B. And by the way, the marquee tool is M for hotkey. Then we'll just color it in. I see that my opacity is not at 100%, so I'll turn that up right there. Then we'll deselect, and you can see that that line is very sharp. I mean, you could almost cut yourself on it. Now we're going to create new a new layer for the horizontal lines, and each We'll create one horizontal line and then we'll copy that horizontal line repeated times to cover the entire page. So we'll do the same process. We'll select our marquee tool and over on the left, we'll click, drag to the right, and then make it a nice fine line. Probably about there. Now we'll get our brush tool and we'll make sure that we have a different color selected. You can really make this background anything you want. You can make the colors anything you want. But we're going to make it as close as possible to lined paper as we can. And when I was looking at some lined paper, 
the horizontal lines are most often a blue color and it's a light blue so right about there I'll hit OK and then we'll just color it in once we have that colored in we will copy it control C and then paste now we'll select our move tool and use arrow keys or you can click and drag it to a good width apart from the previous line and to make it faster each line we will that we create we will merge the layer down to the other line then this is all one image we'll select all copy and paste and now you can see that it copied two lines versus just one this makes it so that we can do multiple lines at the same time instead of going each line at a time making it a lot faster but to save you some time we're going to actually speed this process up right now all right now that we have our main color set our left margin and our horizontal lines all put in we are done with our background and so the important part is that we save an original copy of our project as a Photoshop file and you can save that in any location on your computer and then the other the second part that's even more key is that we save this as a PNG in the location of your sprites folder in your game project that was awesome we got ourselves a background and in our next video we're gonna put it into unity so you sitting at home on the other end of this camera make your backgrounds put them in it'll be awesome get working on your game so you can be a developer like us and subscribe <laughs>